Will we switch? I don't know. Um... Tuesday afternoon so we got a couple inches of rain last night slowed some stuff up out in the field so uh, Bo and Dane finished up the header the last header yesterday um, the only thing we had to do to it is put the air bar on it and uh, you know kind of set some stuff up on it I guess as far as hold downs a little more and so on and then that's uh, pretty much ready to go today we started cleaning the shop uh, we're gonna start hauling hauling in some grain um, probably tomorrow so we wanted to take a day and or part of a day anyway and get and get this place all cleaned up it's been getting used pretty hard lately so as you can see kind of pulled everything out we go back behind there uh dane dane was washing windows and carrying on and then uh, uh got a lot of this trim work on the bottom cleaned up uh Bo ran the floor scrubber and and cleaned up the floor in our welding area got that pretty cleaned up all in all it's it's in uh pretty good shape now so yeah we have some uh, corn we're gonna start hauling in here tomorrow last year's corn we have uh, some contracts uh, that we made last year that we're gonna try to fill here so we're gonna get that that hauled in but um, anyway that's kind of the plan here all right well I'll check back with you later yesterday one of our new trailers was leaking air the airbags couldn't hear it so you'd get out to the field and you'd wait for a load and the air would leak down in the trailer and then you'd have to, you know, you can't wait for it to air up so you'd take off and it's kind of hard on the bag. So I, uh, I got some soapy water and I started spraying around all these fittings and what I found was these, uh, these three fittings right here that go into the dump valve were all three, well four, one, two, three, four, they were all leaking. I pulled them out to make sure the ends were nice and straight, not at an angle and all that. I trimmed them just a little bit on the end to make sure they were nice and straight, put them back in, they are still leaking. I couldn't figure it out. So then I took them out and I cut them back past where they, they grab on. So I cut them back about that far. And then I put them in, pulled them out, and it doesn't leak. So, I mean, obviously that's pretty elementary stuff, uh, but gotta cut them back further so they, but yeah, now it don't leak and the airbags have been up all night on the trailer nice little thing to have fixed but Bo is uh he's over there loading up scrap Dane he's at another farm getting some steel bent uh over by Greenbush and uh we're gonna take the service truck and bring it over to the the bagger and then uh so that way that's ready for uh when we use the crane to uh lift the hopper back on yeah, uh, dad just come back from some chisel plowing. We were able to do a couple fields today. The rest are a little wet yet, so we gotta wait. Another day or two. Dean's working on this. These are them uh, side draw shoots, or lengthen them out and put in a nice, flatten them out, nice taper to them so they shoot into the truck nice. Yeah. Then he had a uh, uh, guy over by Greenbush there, bent these all up for us. So what do you think? With the outcome? Well, it work, it'll work, won't it? Oh, yeah. The grain will slide down it. Ice bowls. It's hard to weld that galvanized. It's not very good. You gotta grind it all off. That's what, that's what she looks like. Oh, we're gonna go see him. Bowl, see if he needs a hand. It's got quite an operation going there. We're gonna check out this operation. See if you need a hand. Huh? See if you need a hand. Yeah. Well, every farm's got one of these messes. Well, maybe not every farm, but this farm does. Grandpa put this down years ago. All this tin, and then it just gets. It keeps getting piled on. We've probably cleaned it out. 
Oh, I bet you we've cleaned it out a half a dozen times as far as things that we've hauled in and got rid of some miscellaneous junk, but quite a bit in here that needs to go. Well, this won't get finished today, which is fine, but won't be much left to do tomorrow. It's never been done and a guy needs to do it. Yeah, found a lot of good stuff. Did you really or not? Yeah. I wonder if like that thing with all the rollers on it shouldn't have went. Oh, that's a nice piece. Oh. There's a couple things that should be cut apart. Yeah, well. Like this. You know, if you took these two arms off of this, now this is a nice straight piece. Those are fairly straight. Yeah. It doesn't take up as much. Well, yeah, it's all goofy. Just cut the U-bolts. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll show you what it looks like tomorrow. Well, we got a little problem with Marv this morning. <laughs> Stephanie was hauling corn yesterday and the airbags went down on her, so under further inspection, the leveling rod had come loose. So we're gonna weld that on and it'll be just like new again. Are you all done? No. <laughs> See, I want to be where all the sparks land, you know. <laughs> you find a home, it's got a home, you know. Yeah. There. Now you're happy. Okay. It's stuck. At least we blocked the truck up. <laughs> what fun is it if you can't live on the edge a little bit? Yeah. There, now Stephanie can, she can haul ass. Yeah. Put the heel to the steel. Yeah. Yeah, she'll be, she'll leave behind us and she'll somehow get back here before us. I'm gonna do here is I'm going to town I'm gonna go to town and get some uh, get some culverts we got a project on some new ground up north uh, we got to put in some uh, new culverts that go under a dike that dump into a ditch that's the beauty about CRP nobody's nobody's looked at it for you know 20 30 years so things kind of just get neglected which is just the way it is so now we're gonna go in and clean it up and put new in well we're here we got all our paperwork got our uh, watershed stuff got our maps now we're gonna go into the county office here do our uh, our right-of-way stuff so we can work in there right away pick up some pipes and off we go Wrap her down and off we go. Well, we made her up north here. Get these unstrapped and fire up the trackle and take them off. All right, so now it's just to knock them off. Okay, so we'll shut her down and come back tomorrow and start on this. We're back here at the farm. I'm uh, Bo's hauling corn today and I'm gonna finish his uh, junkyard project, scrap iron project that he's got here. He's uh, organized all the iron here on, uh, put, them on put it on pallets all the way down over there. Then we uh, decided to do something with totes, cut the tops off, open the valve. That way we can keep some stuff separate. And then the good steel will be placed in here. 
where we can find it and reuse it. It's uh, one of them projects that keeps getting overlooked. It was a good uh, two-day deal, but we're gonna get that uh, get that all put put back away. Okay, so we finished the uh, moving all the steel around. It's all gone. Kind of organized it the best I could from the way Bo had uh, put it on the pallets. And so now we have a pretty organized mess for the most part. So, uh, okay, we're going to finish this up and head to the field. So, we're back in the ditcher. We can take a quick look at the, the ditcher here. So this is a 21. They've made a few improvements. Uh, especially the uh, auger system on them. This one's been working just fine for us and our ground. I do know the new cross auger system that does work better. So anyway, Curry Revolution. So uh, nothing new, it's been out for a few years. There's the big fan-cooled planetary that uh, runs the drum. So when I say rotary ditcher, what I mean is it, all the dirt comes out here out the paddles so I'll sh we'll be running in here in a minute I'll show you and these are these augers I was talking about so the new ones that you get have a floating uh, an auger that goes across the whole way and it floats and it helps beat it up in there and it goes in and out so that's that's pretty nice yeah there's uh, not a lot to it uh, just uh, it's like a six or seven foot drum in here. The machine also tilts left and right. And then we got the deflectors up there so you can control your spout. Uh, it throws it left and right, which you'll see in a minute. There's a gate that slides, that'll slide down and cover this hole and then it'll carry it out that way. And then here's the slip clutch. No, not there. There's a power limiting slip clutch. So there's uh, no shear pins. It's a power limiting clutch, which means if it's hit something or whatever, it'll just snap loose and then the tractor will spin and then you shut your PTO off and then it'll lock back up, you move the obstruction and it'll start up again. I've only probably had that happen to me once. Well, let's, we'll get going here. I'm gonna show you a little bit about the technology we use for our ditching. We don't tile, at least not yet. Down the road, I'm sure we will be, but as of now, we haven't been. So we do all surface drainage, which on a lot of our ground, we got a lot of nice topography. It, uh, we don't have a lot of flat fields that pond. So it works pretty good for us. Anyway. Here's the software. This is SD Drain. So what this is, this is a software that's placed on a Windows-based rugged tablet. We have the maps generated by CHS Yield Point. We can put different layers in here, but this is what we have selected on this field. Right now, you can see these here little orange spots are depressions so like holes and then the different colors like that color them are watersheds that means that's where the water breaks and goes that way and this here goes down this ditch and this here goes out this way and this goes out this way so it shows you what uh the topography is as far as the water sheds you don't need to ditch every single line on here what i try to do is i get the main black ones uh, and get a little carried away i guess and try to get all of them but that's uh not very necessary so the ditch that i've selected is green i've surveyed it there's the survey front to back top to bottom i mean and uh then i dropped it two and a half inches and we cut 81 yards of dirt out of there. As you can see, it's not a straight line. This software steps it down so you move less dirt and you're more efficient. So 
we'll do a survey here and I'll show you how it works. Okay, to do a survey now, we hit start survey to outlet, because we're going to the outlet. And that's us right here, right there, that little arrow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this little guy. We're gonna take him, bring him down to here. Uh, this is a big waterway, so we don't need to ditch that. That's, that's That drains pretty good. So we're gonna take this little guy and bring him down. That's what we're gonna survey right now. So this is a short little ditch we just ran from here to here. And that is the side profile. So as you can see, after this hole, there's a big dip, divot right here. So the water is going to sit right in here. So we're going to take that out and, and get it cleaned out. So then we hit stop survey. Okay. It shows us that right there, that's what we want to cut out. We're going to drop it down another two and a half inches because we want a nice uh, cut. So total yardage is 53 yards. And our length of our ditch is 534 feet. We're going to turn the PTO on. So now we're going to turn our cross augers on. There's one, there's two. And then as soon as I start moving, it'll, it'll go down. So we're getting close to this, uh, this hump here. we can slow down this is an IVT transmission so we can slow down to less than a about two tenths of a mile an hour there we'll switch gates wind is switching Getting into that deep cut right now. She's pretty deep right now. We just uh, just getting out of that cut. So we cut 56 yards of dirt in about six minutes. Is what uh, when I turn this camera on. Now that ditch will drain.
passes. This here is a, a pretty shallow cut. We're coming down, coming down into the draw here, so it's not a very deep cut. We're gonna put another pass in here and then we'll take the sides off. So we're gonna take this awfully red 595 and get it hooked up to the 5200. Oh, nice visibility of the hitch. That's for sure. Okay, we're in the CRP field here with the uh, the quad track. Shane's gonna be out here in a little bit to uh, get the GPS set on it. But for right now, I'm just gonna make sure we get the the machine itself set, the depth on that. So we'll try that here quick, and then and then we'll wait for for Shane to show up. Well, we're, uh, we got a about four tenths of rain this morning. And now we are uh, out here again, and but uh, <laughs> after it dried up, it looks like we uh, we have another another shower coming. So I don't know how much we're gonna get done here. The tractor's working really nice. There's their auto steer. Yeah, everything seems to be. So far, I'm liking the tractor. Well, hey guys, we're back at the 595. Just gonna give you a little, uh, little walk around on what I think and uh, what I like. We've got to put a few hours on it. Uh, we got rained out here a few days ago, so it's been sitting. Didn't get quite as much time in it as I'd like, but. I think I kind of got the finer points of what I like and maybe what I don't like. For the most part, isn't really what I like versus the deer or whatever. It's just what I really like about this machine or what I don't like. So to start off with, I, uh, I do like the way the hood opens. It opens really nice and easy. You know, basically you can open it with one hand. So. That's pretty handy. Um, so we did the front, now we're gonna come into the back. I do like the uh, cab visibility from there to the hitch. You can see everything very, very nice. The deer gets a little cluttered in here. You can't see the hitch very well as far as that goes, just from what I'm used to. Uh, I do like the hookups. Everything hooks up nice. I'm just saying like where the location is. They're not way up here, they're not down here. They're, they're in a nice spot. The tracks, I guess I like the deer tracks better. I like the taller track. I think uh, longevity and stuff like that maybe, but the uh, the overall track is a nice track. But yeah, I, I like taller tracks than the deer, but these definitely are a proven design. Okay, so I found the batteries. I thought they were in that door there, but they're up here, so. I would say I'd have to give it to deer on this one. Theirs is behind the steps, so you unbolt the steps and you don't have to climb up anything. You just, you can slip them right in. I think they've moved them over the, t over the years. I think they used to be where you could put them in ground level. But anyway, they used to be in here. Your, your boost, if you want your disconnect and your uh, hookups are right here ground level. But if you have to put battery in, batteries in, they're up, they're up there. So, like I said, not a big deal. I'm sure a guy can work around it. It's not the end of the world. I like the little toolboxes. I know that's been a standard for many, many years, having a couple toolboxes. Another thing that's kind of neat is the step. It oscillates out when you turn. I know that's been around forever and ever. Um, but it is handy doesn't really Doesn't really change the way I, I guess we get it out of the tractor as far as the the deer versus this but if you are turn typically 
if we shut the tractor off or we're getting out of the tractor, I always like to have it straight so the U-joints aren't sitting at an angle clattering. So that part doesn't really matter, but. So yeah, there's your def here. I like the steel fuel tank. I know that's been forever and ever, but I uh, I would prefer the the nice big steel fuel tank. Uh, fuel capacity is is very good. So I mean, you can't really pick apart a new tractor. I mean, honestly, this thing is pretty sweet. So I can't. Uh, I mean, like I said, some of the little things that I'm saying are probably just dumb, but okay. So. I really like the interior, the, the the stitching and the way it looks. I like the tan and the red instead of just all brown and black. So, and then it's it, it does have some options here. So I think, uh, let's see, there's a fan. So that would be like your air conditioned seat. And then uh, you get heated seats. As far as visibility, how the machine operates, uh, what I think about it as other than just some of them little picking points. This is their new monitor. I've never been in to this ever. And it was actually very user friendly. I was quite surprised because usually Case IH New Holland monitors for me were very foreign. It just seemed like you had to go through a lot of stuff to get to what you wanted to go through. They've really simplified it. And nice thing is too, is when you bring up a screen, I should have it start up, but it'll it'll do like a connect and drop arrow. So like, if you want to go to here, this is how you get there. And so you just click that and bam, there you go. I guess we could start it and, or just turn the key on anyway. We'll go over some of the cab here. We're waiting for this to load. It is a little noisier in here than the deer like i said that's per personal opinion but from running the deer and running this one it, you it is a little noisier is it worth not owning one absolutely not i'm just saying it is a little noisier so if i could be really picky that would be one of the first things i would really like is a little quieter cab visibility it's pretty dang good. I will give you that. I mean, that thing is huge. That thing's huge on the outside, but honestly, look at that. Like, you don't hardly see it at all. So, and then that sloped hood, boy, look at, I mean, you get really good visibility there. You know, there. I mean, obviously you got this in the way when you're sitting here, you can probably adjust it or whatever, but anyway. And then there's the there's the hitch. You can see right down to the hitch. A couple other things. Probably the um, vents. We need more vents instead of everything right in front. Like all your vents are right here. Other than me, you got one hidden back here. That one's kind of nice. And uh, that's about it. So like with the deers you know in the ceiling and stuff you can point it at the window if you got a foggy morning you can do this you can you can kind of spin them and point them wherever you want to get your desired uh comfort level so that makes it a little more comfortable uh so that part would be kind of neat if they had some some stuff you know like the deer does where you could have multiple places to get your uh air conditioning or air heat or whatever you're needing they got a nice setup up here can't complain about that everything's nice there it's got really nice lights when you open up the door at night it's really nice and bright in here okay so this here is on so anyway basically you go in here you click that and then these are them drop downs i was talking about here you got your tractor and it drops down to here and then it you know, so, so if you want to change something, you don't need to go into six pages to get to your implement or to get to your configuration or whatever. So that it's all kind of right here, but I really, I really do like the drop down arrows, you know, it's like, Hey, this is what you need. This is what you're, you know, if you're doing this, you're probably going to be doing this and doing this. So that part's pretty nice. There's your apps, different apps. So anyway, I'm not going to go over a lot of this because I don't know much about it, but 
there's a, a ton of stuff this stuff does. Um, then you can set your other screen up, obviously, to for your regular information when you're running your equipment. The machine itself, the shifting, I really like. From what I'm used to in the green, at least the older ones, I mean, they're not old, but they're not new anyway. But when you shift them, they go, they kind of pause and then they take off and then they kind of pause and then they take off, you know, where the case is like, bam, right now, boom, 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 boom. And then it's got the automatic skip. So it'll skip a gear every time, unless you don't, unless you don't want it to skip a gear. Then there's this little button right here. You just hold that and then you, you click, then it'll, it'll go single or it'll drop you down one gear and then that way when you shift again it'll double but it'll go back to what gear you want it anyway i really like the shifting on this thing it is pretty sweet um let's see what else do i like about it the auto steer auto steer is pretty nice obviously i'm sure we could set our deer up a little better but the way this one's set up is is pretty sweet you just make your corner half turn so to speak and you get close to your line and you hit it and it doesn't like jerk you or pull you you know get aggressive and pull you in it just it just vroom, pulls you in so nice that could be a lot to do with our settings on our on our deer um but overall i really like the auto steer on this it it does it worked really nice it loads right away it doesn't you don't have to sit here for half an hour either um the deer is fast as can be but i know back when it was out the the trimble was or whatever this is is was slower but it's it seems pretty good now steering really like the steering it turns tighter than the deer so when you got a smaller high speed tool like this it's i mean not every tool is 50 feet wide so you know this isn't a very big tool and even though we skip every other round it is nice to be able to turn a little tighter if you need and this this machine does it it's got such a nice turn power okay so that's a big one um i would say um this 595 is really similar to our 570 you know the five i mean our 570 has been turned up so it's probably closer to um about exactly the same horsepower as this so I would say, I think our 570 is about 590 now, or 590, yeah, it's right at 590 years. It's, they're about identical as far as horsepower goes now. But anyway, from what I can tell is, it seemed like this one has, I don't know, this, this engine's got a little more low end torque to it. So I can throttle back a little bit and it'll pull it just fine. And, uh, when we make our turns on the headlands, I throttle back and then I stick it in the ground and it just takes off and it just it just pulls, it just goes. I would say probably low end torque, but I think if I'm not mistaken, this engine has got a twin turbo engine. I'd have to double check on that. So I think that might have a little bit to do with it too versus the single turbo on the deer. Um, but it's definitely got some more low end on it than than the deer for sure no question about it i know it does i like the throttle and the shifting all in one i know this has been something that's been around for a long time but i do like this this is nice yeah uh, this is your ford in reverse so that's pretty nice right here too auto steer i like to be able to lock so if you want to lock this and you don't want so let's say you're setting it up for a young guy or a, or a someone hired that had, doesn't have a lot of experience in this and you say, okay, I want to use this one, this one, and but not this one, this one. So anyway, all you got to do is slide this down, and it's locked. They can't touch it, you know. And you pull it up like that, and now it's free. So I like that part. So if I could nail it down just to a few things, I would say the things I really like about this is the sloped hood, a little more visibility, the shifting, the the low end power that's really nice and then the steering that's really nice just a little tighter turn smooth and i'm sure this one's set up with the wicked hydraulics because it's uh the hydraulics are pretty awesome on it i think that's about it i'm not really gonna pick pick this thing apart because it's there's not much to pick apart it's it's a nice tractor will we switch i don't know um 
gonna have to do some uh, thinking on that. I'm not saying we're not gonna get a red one, but we're, as far as switching green to red, you know, and I know there's a lot of people out there that are, they got their hair up on the, you know, the layoffs and some of the stuff that deer's pulled here now lately, and I'm not gonna get into that, and that doesn't really, I'm not gonna let that really influence my decision right now. Um, if that, something like that was to get out of control, then, then possibly, but uh, as of right now, I've been been very happy with the with the service and the, and uh, everything that goes with green. But we are looking for a big horse for tillage, and it just seems like it. But any time I go to a big farm or been by another farm, and uh, it's a green farm. They got the red tractors doing the heavy pulling. I mean scrapers and and stuff like that mainly, but uh, yeah, I mean the red ones are doing doing the t some of the tillage and you know running some of that real heavy duty stuff. So I don't know. Um, we're definitely considering it. I can't give you a definitive answer right now, but that's just my view on it. So don't beat me up too bad on it. That's just. Uh, one guy's personal opinion. So that that was our our take on this new 595. It's a great tractor. Someone uh, I don't think this one's going to be for us. But um, if we were to get a red one, I think we'd have we'd want something up in the 620 or 600 plus, just for uh, you know if it's going to be doing that heavy pulling and stuff like that. We want a little extra power. I guess that's. That's what we're looking at after driving this one. This one's got nice adequate power, but for some of these high speed tools and some of the bigger uh, tillage tools that we have, I'd rather be a little over equipped as far as power goes and not uh, not be pulling the heart, the heart and soul out of this thing. But anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I hope, uh, hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>